Well, aloha, everyone. I have a question for you today. Can you hear him now? Can you hear him now? You might be wondering, what does that mean? Well, hi, I'm Brian Ashpole, pastor of Honolulu Assembly of God here in beautiful Honolulu near world-famous Diamond Head. It's Wednesday, December 9th, and I'm excited. I'm excited, friends, as I am each week, because we're looking at incredible scripture passages all this month of December that have the potential to be life-changing. That's right, friend. That is right. If you apply these powerful truths to your life, they can change your life. And today we're looking at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. So let's think about that question, can you hear him now? Can you hear him now? What does that mean? Do you remember the commercial, Can You Hear Me Now? Verizon Wireless ran a series of ads from 2002 to 2011, emphasizing the effectiveness and extensiveness of their wireless system. In the ads, a man would be in different places with his cell phone on the Verizon wireless network, and he would ask the question, can you hear me now? The idea was that no matter where he went, no matter where he was, the call was not fuzzy, not hard to understand, but was instead clear. It was easy to hear, easy to understand. Well, I'm asking the question, can you hear him now? And then of course, I'm not referring to a cellular phone network, whether Verizon Wireless or any other. The question is, can you hear the Lord now? Can you hear the Lord? And what does that mean? Well, the answer to that brings us to Hebrews chapter 1. Let's look at that. Hebrews chapter 1, in the New Testament, in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. So in the past, that's B.C., meaning before Christ. God spoke through the prophets, Moses, Samuel, then later Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. They're the major prophets, not because their value is any greater than the other prophets, but their, their books, what they wrote is a lot longer. And then the minor prophets, not because they're less, but because their books are a lot shorter. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, and all the others. See, God spoke to man through these many prophets, Many times, the scripture says, the author of Hebrews, many times and in various ways. Over the span of time of many generations, God communicated his message, his word to his people through his prophets by the spoken word, uh, the written word, instructions, warnings, prophecies, promises, miracles, you know, all these other things. Some people listened and heard God's message, but tragically, many did not. But there was coming a time when God would no longer speak primarily through his prophets. Are there prophets today? Yeah. The Bible speaks about the gift of prophecy. It's a supernatural gift from the Holy Spirit. I, I know David Wilkerson, uh, who's since gone to be with the Lord. He was a great prophet for our day. But in these last days, the author of Hebrews declares, God speaks to us, not indirectly via his prophets, but directly by his son. He speaks directly, not indirectly, but directly by his son. He speaks his message of good news, the gospel, which literally means the good news. He speaks his message of love to us directly by his son, not directly through the prophets. Now, I have a question. If you were going to receive a message of love, a declaration of love, would you rather receive it directly or indirectly? Would you rather receive that message of love firsthand or via a messenger. See, we laugh over stories from junior high about young people who passed along messages of love and affection. A young lady goes up to a young guy or a, or a young guy comes to a young lady and says, hey, so-and-so likes you. So-and-so likes you. Did you ever have that happen to you? I never was involved in that practice myself. I don't know if I should be relieved or disappointed. But you probably have heard such stories and laughed over them. But friends, how much better it is to say to the one you love directly, say to that person face to face, I love you. I love you. Well, I vividly remember the day I first said those words to my now wife. We had been dating for a number of months when I sat her down and said, Shirley, I think I love you. She replied, you think? I quickly said, I love you. Thankfully, she said the same thing to me. Otherwise, it would have been a very awkward moment. Instead, it was a beautiful moment. We have continued to say each day, I love you for many, many years. Well, in the same way, how much better is it, friends? 
How much better is it to have the Lord say directly to us by his son, I love you. I love you. He's not speaking indirectly by the prophets and, uh, and messengers, even by angels, friends. God spoke to us directly by his son. I love you. I love you. I love you. We have the record of that in his word, the Bible. That's why it's so important to read the Bible, read the word, to hear about his love and affection, to hear about his grace and mercy, his compassion, his loving kindness. Now, one day while Jesus was teaching, one of his disciples made a request of him. Philip asked Jesus, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. If Philip thought, hey, that's good. We, we see if the, Jesus shows the Father, that'll be great. Jesus declared and surprised Philip and all the others, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. It's God the Son. Jesus looks just like his Father, and he speaks just like him. He speaks on behalf of him, speaks for him. And Hebrews 1 verse 3 confirms this. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Jesus is the radiance of God's glory, friends. Isn't that amazing? Now, Peter, James, and John definitely got a peek of that. They got a glimpse of that on the Mount of Transfiguration. Matthew 17 tells us that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Jesus was dazzling. He was dazzling, supernaturally so. His heavenly splendor was shining, bursting through his earthly body. The sight and experience of that was so overwhelming that Peter, James, and John fell face down the ground. They were terrified. And you can read through the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, you'll see some overwhelming pictures of Jesus. For example, when John saw Jesus in the first chapter of the book of Revelation, he said, I fell at his feet as though dead. John fainted. He was so overwhelmed by the majesty and the radiance of Jesus that he couldn't stand up anymore. He fainted. Well, Hebrews 1.3 tells us that Jesus is, also, is the exact representation of his, meaning the Father, God, God's being. Wow, that's a double wow, friends. When you encounter Jesus, you have encountered the Father. Did you get that? When you encounter Jesus, you have encountered the Father. One of my favorite Christian authors is Philip Yancey. He tackles some heavy topics and so on. It's so authentic. He's so real. I had the privilege of seeing Philip Yancey in person a uh, number of years ago. He mentioned that some people have a hard time understanding God the Father. They see him only as an angry judge, a stern God who's quick to punish. But Yancey reminded us all that whoever sees Jesus sees the Father because Jesus is the exact representation of his being. So if you want to know what the Father is like, learn more about the Son. Read about Jesus in the Gospels. Read about him in the rest of the New Testament. Jesus is kind, so the Father is kind. Jesus is compassionate. So the Father, we know he's compassionate. Jesus is full of grace and mercy and truth. So we know the Father is full of grace and mercy and truth. Jesus is patient. So the Father is patient. Jesus is faithful. He's full of loving kindness. So we know the Father is all those things. Whatever Jesus is, the Father is also. And Hebrews 1.3 also tells us that Jesus sustains all things by his powerful word. Do you have a problem? Do you have a need? Do you need his intervention? Will his powerful word that sustains all things, friends, be enough for you? Yes. Yes, definitely. No doubt about it. His word, powerful word that sustains all things is enough for you and for me. The author of Hebrews goes on, verse 3. Let me read it again. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. <laughs> wow, isn't that crazy? I, I, I mean, that's great. That is crazy great. Jesus is not striving, friends. Hear this. Jesus is not striving to bring you salvation. He is not struggling against the devil to try to win somehow. This is some life or death struggle. The un outcome is not in doubt. It's never been in doubt. By his death on the cross, Jesus defeated death hell and the grave. What Satan thought would bring him his ultimate victory turned out instead to bring him his ultimate defeat. 
Jesus died on the cross for sin. He rose triumphantly from the grave and sat down at the right hand of the Father. There he makes constant intercession on behalf of you and me. There he waits on the time till the time of his return when we shall see him in his glory. We're going to see him face to face. I have a question for you, friends. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? The Father loves you with a love that is beyond your comprehension. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to salvation. The Bible is very clear about that. All should come to salvation. That's, that means you. It means you. The Father was willing to give up His Son as a sacrifice to pay the penalty for sin that, that you and I could never afford. Jesus is our great substitute. He took your place. He took my place. The Father spoke through His messengers, the prophets. But now He's speaking to us via His Son, the radiance of His glory and the exact representation of His being. The Father is speaking directly to you by His Son, friends. Speaking to me, He's speaking words of love. He's speaking words of forgiveness, of reconciliation, of restoration, of redemption. He wants to be in relationship with you. Are you ready to accept His offer, friends? Are you ready to surrender your life to Him? This Christmas season of 2020, 2020, is the right time to do that, friends. It's the right time to enter into a relationship with the Father. You know, in many ways, 2020 has been a tough year, coronavirus pandemic and social distancing and quarantine, all these things we're getting tired of and masks and financial uncertainty and rioting and violence and political turmoil and all the other things. A lot of people would like to forget this year, but, but if you surrender your life to the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ, 2020, 2020 will be the best year that you've ever had. It'll be the best year ever for you. Now, isn't that beautiful, friends? That is beautiful. That is powerful. That can be life-changing for you, friends. That can change your life. And I challenge you to surrender your life to Jesus. Please surrender your life for Jesus. It'll be the greatest choice. It'll be the greatest decision you will ever make. Would you do it today? Friends, would you do it today if you've already done that? You already, you already know Christ is your Lord and Savior. You're already in relationship with Jesus. This is the time to surrender your life in a greater way to Him than you've ever done before. He has done everything for you, friends. He's given you everything that you need. He gives you life and health, a healthy body, a sharp mind. He uh, gives you protection and provision and all these other things. And most of all, He's given you spiritual gifts, salvation, freedom from sin, adopting you into His family. He gives you His precious Holy Spirit. He gives you His loving, faithful presence. We can never repay Him for all all he has done for us you know friends we can never repay him for all he's given to us but we can do what we can we can give him our heart we can give him our lives christina rossetti was an english poet who lived during the 1800s and one of her poems entitled in the bleak midwinter was later set to music and became a beloved christmas carol the last verse might be familiar to you what can i give him poor as i am if I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give him my heart. Friends, I urge you, I challenge you, give Jesus your heart. Give him your life. Do as Christina Rossetti challenged her readers so long ago, over 100 years ago, 120 plus years ago. Now help me out. Have you done that, friends? Have you done that? Have you given your life to the Lord? Have you surrendered? Are you surrendering to Him every day? If you have a response to what I've shared today, friends, please leave a comment if you would. And please let me know how you're doing. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching, please leave me a message, whether on our, on our website, honoluluag.org. Got, got a great Christmas theme going on. Or our Facebook page, which is probably where most of you are. If not, just search Facebook for Honolulu AG and you'll find it right there. Or our YouTube channel, Search Honolulu Assembly of God. And, and please give us a like on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. And please, friends, please share our website or Facebook or YouTube resource with others so they can be encouraged also. If you've been inspired or encouraged or learned something new today, would you share that with someone else so they could be blessed, encouraged, and inspired also? Well, we're going to go to prayer in just a moment. But let me, before, 
Before we do that, let me say this. This Sunday, December 13th, we're going to continue in our Christmas series at Honolulu Assembly of God, based from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. His name shall be called this Sunday. His name shall be called Almighty God. It's going to be awesome. I hope you can be there and join us in person, on site. If not, please join us online. The service will be shown live on both Facebook and YouTube. And so I invite you to do that. Well, are you ready to go to prayer at this time, friends? Are you ready to, to pray? Let's do it. Let's, let's go to prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of knowing you, of hearing your word to us, Lord, that you spoke through in the past, indirectly through your prophets and through others. But Lord, now you speak directly to us by your Son. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that he, he is the exact representation of your being, Lord. He, he's everything that we need. We thank you, Lord, that uh, all he's given to us, all he's done for us, Lord, and I want to surrender my life to you in a greater way at this Christmas season 2020 than I've ever done before, and I pray that, Lord, for everyone watching, every man, every woman, every young person, every boy, every girl. Lord, may they know the truth and reality of who you are. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, God bless you. Jesus loves you. Aloha and aloha keakua. Well, friends, there is more life-changing truth coming up right here, right where you're watching. So I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, aloha, God bless. Bye-bye. We'll see you.